Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. Today's video is going to be a chill get ready with me style video and telling you guys about the products that I've been loving recently. I had one of those days where I woke up like 30 minutes before my alarm clock went off so I figured why not do a get ready with me style video. I wanted to test out the new microphone that I got for my YouTube videos. In case you guys are wondering, um, it's the DJI Mic 2. It's like a little portable microphone system. Um, it's clipped right here to me. It comes in this cute little carrying case. It plugs directly into a phone or a camera. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but I am glad that I invested in it. I've just been getting into audio because I started a podcast recently and I at first thought I was going to use this for my microphone, but I did wanna get good XLR microphones with like a recorder and headsets and everything. So I did invest in that separately for my podcast, but I wanted to use this um, for my not only YouTube videos, but I am planning on releasing master classes eventually, like online ones. I figured might as well just invest in like one of these portable ones. It comes in this little compact carrying case. And also I'm not sponsored by them in any way, although that'd be really cool. <laughs> this is recorded on my phone right now. I just wanted you guys to see the setup. This is the receiver right here that is plugged directly into the camera. So it's gonna be feeding the audio in directly. So then this receiver actually plugs in to this, kind of like any of your portable headphones. They have their own carrying case and this one does charge it as it's going to, which is kind of nice. And then you just plug in the whole entire case and it charges everything in there. It does come with two different transmitters. I am wearing one, so then the other one fits right into here and then the receiver goes in here. This is the adapter to plug into your phone and then this is the adapter to plug into a laptop. Um, I think it's really handy though and the audio quality obviously sounds really nice. Let me turn on the soft boxes again here. But see, it's nice because as I'm moving around, you guys can still hear the audio quality, which I think is really good. I know you guys came for makeup, but um, I just figured that I might as well share the really fun little product that I got recently. <laughs> I'm first gonna start off with my brows before I get too ahead of myself. This is so, so rubbed off because I've been using it for a while, but this is the Gimme Brow by Benefit. It's in number six. My eyebrows are microbladed, so all I do is just shade in a little bit. I don't wanna go in like too heavy handed or anything. Going in with the Tarte Shape Tape Radiant Concealer, and this is what I've been using to prime my eyelids recently. And I've really been loving this over the regular Tarte Shape tape concealer, the mattifying one, only because I've been liking a really glowy complexion recently and that's what I've been doing in my clients. So I'm testing this out. So in case I really like it and like the formulation of it, I wanna go ahead and use it on my clients. Um, I'm kind of in between this though and the Too Faced Ethereal Light Concealer. I do own both. If you guys are a makeup artist, by the way, please do not do the same mistake that I used to do when I first started really investing like in my makeup kit. <laughs> I used to really get sucked in to all of the trends, then started following all these makeup artists that I really admired. They would talk about all of their favorite products. I would just get really excited and be like, okay, well, if they like this product, it must be good. So I'll just buy the whole entire shade range. Please do not do that. What works for one artist may not work for another person. Everybody, I swear, underneath the sun that is a makeup artist has the NARS Natural Radiant Concealer inside of their kit and I absolutely hate it. <laughs> so I saw all these makeup artists using the Natural Radiant Concealer inside of their kits and I'm like, okay, if all these people like it and they're really good artists, they must be really good, right? I do have a NARS discount, which also kind of sucks too because then I was like really more so persuaded to buy it too. So I went on a NARS's website and I go, okay, let me buy like six different shades of this and then I'll see if I like it. And my other mistake was I tried it out on a paying client first without testing it out on myself. Yeah, let's just say that the concealer situation did not go so well. I just think they're really drying. I don't think they're radiant at all. I mean, this thing is radiant. Like it gives you a glow within. It almost has like light reflecting particles in it. The NARS Radiant Concealer is not radiant. It's not the same effect as this. So that's why I like this and the Ethereal Light Concealer more because they actually do have like a reflect to them. Before I continue my story, I'm gonna go on to my under eye color correction. I've been doing this recently, especially now because like I feel like my dark circles are real today. I'm going in with the Dermatology Luminous Eye Corrector SPF 41. It's very interesting because it comes in like an actual serum applicator. So if you open it, it looks like this, almost like you're applying an eye cream. You can pump it out and then just apply it like this directly. They all come in like peachy tones. They're supposed to obviously color correct underneath your eye. The brand actually did send me these and I really wish that I could use them in my kit because they sent me like the whole entire color range pretty much. The only reason I would not be able to have it inside of my kit though is because of the fact that it has SPF 41, which means that it might have flashback with any photography. I'd probably have to test it because it does a really good job at color correcting. As you saw, I just put those two little dots underneath my eyes right here. Look at how well that concealed my under eyes. 
And it's not patchy, it's not flaky, like it sits really well, and then it layers really well underneath concealer too. Or you could also use it alone too. I'm trying to choose an eyeshadow palette that like you guys can still get, because I have a lot of limited edition like type palettes, which kind of sucks. Let me go in with an affordable eyeshadow palette for once. I'm going in with the Makeup Revolution um, palette that looks like this. Um, it's the Reloaded Velvet Rose palette. It's actually a dupe for the Soft Glam palette. Mine got a little bit busted, but this is what it looks like. I'm gonna be taking a combination of this one, um, this one, and this one, possibly this one. I'm gonna start on my eyeshadow look here, and then I'll go ahead and get started in talking to you guys about like what's actually been happening in my life here. So as I mentioned earlier, talking about audio equipment. I am starting a podcast. It's called The Unfiltered Artist with Julie Ruby. Um, it is available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And then I also am going to be uploading it as a video. So in case you guys are more of like visual people like me, then um, I'm gonna be uploading it as a video format. I will admit that I have been recently into the By Kaylee podcast. And then I've also been into Shelby Henry MUA's podcast, um, the makeup artist podcast that she's been been doing. So I have been following those two. And then I believe that there is another makeup artist too that is Rachel Lusk. She is developing a podcast called Coffee and Contour. And it was actually supposed to, I swear, be launched in February and that never happened. So, I mean, I'm sure that obviously her life's busy. Like she's booked and busy like all the time. It's, it seems like you never really know. So yeah, to be totally honest though, like I thought about launching a podcast like a couple years back and I'm kind of regretting now that I didn't because <laughs> then I would have gotten ahead of all the makeup artist podcasts. I'm still going to obviously be talking about what I want to talk about. And then I also have like different guests than those people are having too. I have two guests lined up right now and they're actually both people that have assisted me in the past. I am really kind of nervous about hosting for some reason. Like I hear it's kind of a whole different ball game than just having like a regular conversation with people. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sure it'll be really casual because I do know these two people and we have had conversations for like several hours in the car before going to jobs, but I'm more so afraid of like the conversation taking a lull or something or us like running out of things to talk about, but maybe that's just like an irrational fear and it's never going to happen because we just like talking. My old assistant Mallory is coming on the podcast. I'm so excited. We're going to be so real, so raw, so honest. Like I am not holding back. And I even asked her last night, I was like, hey, is there anything, whether it be business or personal slash family life that you do not feel comfortable talking about because I want to know right up front. And she goes, I'm not holding back. You can talk to me about anything. I'm an open book. And I was like, oh my God, yes. And I'm especially so excited to hear from her about like her personal experiences while she was working or maybe like awful clients or something or people that, because now, that she is fully out of the game. She really doesn't have a reputation to worry about as bad as that's gonna sound. So I know this girl's not gonna hold back. I wanna tell you guys really quickly what foundation that I'm using on my face. So um, I'm actually using the MAC Studio Radiance Foundation. I've been debating about whether to put it in my kit or not, but again, I bought one for myself, testing it out for a while and then deciding if I wanna put it in my kit. Um, it's a serum powered foundation, meaning that it's really lightweight and it actually does have those light reflecting particles that I really like too. And it doesn't have a smell like the Studio Fix Fluid. Like it doesn't smell like paint, which is fantastic. I picked the shade NC25, but this is actually kind of dark for me right now. This would match me during the summer perfectly. So I think I probably should have gone with like NC22, I think. So what I have to do is use a white foundation mixer from Face Atelier, which came from my kit, by the way, and apply that. Okay, yeah. So I think that this is the color that I want, but you see how like nice of a radiance it has to it? Like you can even see it like reflect. I might add a little bit of my olive adjuster. Olive adjuster is also from Face Atelier. I just depotted it in an artist kit company bottle, but it is a green kind of shade. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of it and like mix it in. Okay. So do you guys see the difference that made? So this is the original foundation and then this is the olive adjuster. Obviously, as you can see, this one does match my skin a little bit better. I mean, you could technically get away with either of them, but if you want like a really decent color match, then that's kind of how it would have to work. But that's usually how I color match my clients too. I kind of eyeball it and see what I need to adjust. And this all just comes with experience, by the way. Like it's not something that people necessarily pick up right away. It just blends in really nicely and does match my body completely. Anyways, back to the podcast. I wanted to talk to Mallory though first about um, her being a hairstylist and a makeup artist, like the pros, the cons of it. I'm also going to go into finding assistance and what we personally look for when hiring assistance and any advice for people who are like looking to assist 
other artists or hire assistants themselves. Everybody also defines assistants in a different way. I'm going in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer again, by the way. That's why I kind of like saying secondary artists as opposed to assistants because mine are actually true secondary artists. Like they will do the full application, but then there is like true people who do assist. Clean brushes, sanitize makeup products, go get coffee, which is kind of what you see more so in like film and TV sets or even like with celebrity clients too. But with bridal, um, it's mostly like you're trying to get another person to help you out because there's large ass bridal parties. So the majority of the time, that's kind of what you'll run into in the bridal industry. I want to go into that with her. And then I think this might be on the second episode, which I'm going to probably have the most real and raw authentic content at that point in time because I want to then talk about how stressful in general weddings are. Work life balance, family life, relationship struggles, um, and then also her being able to balance out her freelancing career and also being a mom of three. Like that's crazy to me. Like I can barely keep track of my life and I just have myself and my husband and two dogs to be responsible for. Okay, I think we're looking a little bit bright on our face here. So I'm gonna go in with a bronzer. I'm going with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Contour Wand. I've been seeing these all over TikTok and they they really sucked me in, guys. Elf's been doing a really good job, by the way. Um, This is in the shade Tan Deep. This is looking real funky because I usually like go around my lips just to make them look fuller. I also really have to get going because it's about like a half hour before I have to leave. So I'm going in with the Nude 6 Cream Blush, by the way, and I'm going in with the shade Cherie. These things are so underrated. It stays on really well and it layers really well with other products too on top of it, which is nice. So now I'm going in with the most beat up bronzer that I own, but I love it. It's the Bronzer Reloaded from Makeup Revolution. Again, Makeup Revolution just like kills the game, but it's in the shade Long Weekend. My skin's looking real good. Like, do you guys see like how good my skin looks? But to be totally honest, I kind of have esthetician school to thank for this. Like, don't think that it's just the makeup purely that's doing this, by the way. How your skin looks underneath is how your makeup's gonna look. So if I had a lot of texture and like acne on my face or something, it would look textured. Like it would not look this smooth. Just wanted to be raw and unfiltered for you guys. But I just do like the way though that the products specifically make my skin look. Like I like it having that glowy sort of appearance. And I've been using like all glowy products. So that's what I really have been liking a lot. Next I'm going in with the um, Hourglass Blush, the ambient lighting blush in the shade Luminous Flush. I actually used to have all the Hourglass blushes in my kit. I switched it out with the NARS powder blushes, but guys, I kind of forgot like how much Ambient lighting blush is honestly kind of hit though. Look at that. So I think I might honestly switch back to the hourglass blushes. Like they're so freaking expensive, but I love their payoff. And next I'm going in with the LA Color Shimmer Highlighter in the shade Shine Bright. I got this at the Dollar Tree guys, and it's the greatest highlighter ever. Um, It doesn't have any sort of like actual harsh reflex. It doesn't have chunky glitters or anything. It's just a really like smooth application and the color is really pretty. I feel like it could be used for like a variety of different skin tones. Like I'm just about to show shine bright like a diamond today because of all the glowy products that I have on my face. Yeah, I've just been liking a really, really glowy complexion. Oh my God, I'm such an idiot, guys. You guys were just gonna let me go while not blending out my lip. Oh my God, I just realized that like I'd never blended this out. I would have been looking crazy. Oh my God, yeah, that would have been... <laughs> freaking bad. Okay. Anyways, now that that's rectified. Now the only step that I'm going to do is just set my face. I'm actually going in with two Maybelline powders. They're the Fit Me loose powders. I'm going in with the shade um, Fair Light, which is more of that pinky like kind of undertone, but I usually use that to set underneath my eyes so it blends in with my blush a little bit better. And then I use the shade 15 Light, which is more of a yellow undertone on the rest of my face. And then I'm taking an Artist Kit Company powder puff to go ahead and set my face. Now I'm going back on the podcast. I seriously keep digressing and I'm so sorry about that. The next guest that I'm gonna be having on the podcast, her name's Hannah. She's been my go-to assistant for like the last year. Even though she does go a little bit more on the dramatic side, she genuinely does like doing all looks. But um, her main thing though is specializing in special effects makeup. And that is the coolest thing to me. I do not have the creative capacity for that. So whenever she shows me like new looks or I see them on Instagram, Instagram. I'm just odd. We get along super well and we have fun road trips together and have fun stories. And she by far prizes me so much because she's this really like slender, like model-esque looking person, but she does like the wildest makeup looks you've ever seen. And it just shocks me every single time. So with her, obviously I want to talk about her life, her background. Um, I know she used to work for a few salons. And then she kind of delved into like makeup. She does teach makeup classes at a makeup school in Chicago, 
which is really cool. She does that like I think like every other weekend or maybe every weekend, I'm not really sure. I know she's floating back and forth and I do believe she eventually wants to move to Chicago. So I might be losing her eventually too, which is so sad. And then of course I wanna ask her about her work and special effects. I know that her makeup kit is like way different than mine. It's specifically curated toward like um, film and television sort of makeup, RCMA, Graftobian, all the creams and the paints and everything. Cause she's really like artistic in that sense. Yeah, I kind of maybe wanna have her share like her favorite products or how she personally curated her kit, like why she works the way she does. And then I'm sure I'll find other things to talk about cause she's really fun to talk to. But you guys will love both Mallory and Hannah though. I'm really excited about it. So I'm gonna actually work on getting my lipstick on here quickly because it's now eight o'clock and I have to leave in 15 minutes. These actually were sent to me by Merit Beauty. I have worked with them several different times before. They are a minimalist clean beauty brand. They are also non-comedogenic, which really means a lot to me being a esthetician student because that means that they do not clog your pores, which is fantastic. I also do have more of like a combination skin type. I can get pretty oily through my T-zone. So having products that are non-comedogenic is very essential for me. I just love Merit Beauty because not only is their packaging really nice and clean looking itself and very kind of aesthetic on your vanity, but they also really only do produce the essentials, which is nice. So in case somebody is a true beginner at makeup or something, or maybe even going like on a trip and want very minimal essentials, nothing extra, Merit Beauty is where it's at. I will be totally honest and say that Merit Beauty is sold at Sephora and that's probably where you guys recognize the brand name from. However, you do get a really heavy benefit by actually shopping through Merit Beauty directly. And this is because they include, with everybody's first order, this signature bag. It's this corduroy knapsack looking bag. It's so freaking cute. Whenever I travel around, I actually stick all my beauty products in here and it looks very aesthetic looking, you know? So you do get that. And then you also do get free shipping on their website for any orders over $40. These lipsticks though have recently been launched by them. This is their signature lightweight matte lipsticks. They have had signature lightweight lipsticks before, but they were more of like satiny sort of formulas. I have actually been trying these out already. I wore the red yesterday, but it's just a very like nice blue tone red, which I love blue tone reds because they make your teeth look really white. Really awful uh, application, but that is what this color looks like and it's in the shade power. Now the thing that I really like about these lipsticks though is that they don't feel very matte. Like they're almost like the powder kiss lipsticks from MAC if you've ever tried those. So they go on and glide on really easily. I have super chap lips right now and didn't even prep myself and they went on very smoothly. They didn't grab or tug at any of the dry patches which is really nice and I don't feel like I need to apply on chapstick. They killed it with this formulation. Okay so I'm gonna take this off now and then I'm gonna put on the lipstick that I'm actually going to be wearing today. Oh, and I also will tell you too that yesterday I was at school from 8 30 to 4 o'clock and had to do stuff when I got home. And so I didn't actually take off my lipstick until like, oh, I think it was like six o'clock in the evening or something. And it stayed on the entire time. Like I did not have to touch that red up at all. Um, it is not completely transfer proof though. So please don't think that you can like eat and not have it transfer like a liquid lipstick. Like it will definitely transfer. But if you aren't disrupting it in any shape or form, it's gonna last a really long time. The thing that I like the most about Merit Beauty's like lipsticks too, is that if you roll it up and look at this, it has a very fine tip right here. So as long as you keep using it at this angled edge, it's always going to have this tip, which in turn, lines your lips for you. And this one is in the shade Classic, also a matte lipstick formula. So this is the one I'm actually gonna wear for today because it's more neutral. But yeah, you just see how easy it is to like line your lips with that edge. And this is more of your peachy pink sort of color too. This is what we are looking like though. You see the color is just super nice though. I feel like this would suit like a variety of different skin tones. I'm really overly impressed with these lipstick formulas and just Merit Beauty in general. So again, if you wanna shop through their website directly and get that signature bag, which is so cute, um, I will go ahead and leave a link to shop below. I'll also be listing like all the products that I have currently from Merit Beauty. In case you guys wanna look at the things that I've been really liking, they also are a really good thing to add to your makeup kit. Like I have all the blushes in my makeup kit. That's what I'm currently using for cream blushes right now. Also, I wanted to fully disclose that that is an affiliate link, meaning that I will make a very small commission. But if you do shop through the link though, it really does help out my channel and enable me to create really great content for you guys. So I do really appreciate each and every one of you for doing this. I am officially running late now for esthetician school. So <laughs> gotta wrap this up, but um, hopefully you guys really enjoyed the video. If you guys did, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up as well as also subscribing down to my channel if you guys have not already. And as always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.